Cambrian invertebrate diversity is wide-ranging and well-noted, and further discoveries and descriptions continue to reveal more unusual animals across the world. One of these animals, recently described, is Bahosicaris volto, described just this year, which is one of the largest animals known both from its group, location, and time periods, and is also highly unusual in appearance. Their genus name of Bahusicaris is derived from Belhut, a gigantic sea monster from several Persian cosmographies, and the Latin Caris meaning crab, with the specific name of Volto being derived from the Catalan of Volta, meaning vaults or arch-like structure, referring to the shape of the carapace when seen from the front. The fossils of this animal were found in the Middle Cambrian rocks of the famous Burgess Shale in British Columbia, which dates to around 506 million years ago which is a key site for Paleozoic early invertebrates and vertebrate preservation, with numerous excellently preserved lobopods, stem and total group arthropods, basal chordates, and whole extinct lineages being known of in exquisite detail. Eleven specimens were discovered between 2014 and 2018, with it by 2020 being cleared that this was a new animal, with the near to fully complete preservation and miscellaneous soft tissues being preserved aiding in this. Bahusicaris was found to be a genus of bivalved hymenocarian arthropods, with bivalved in this case, which means two shells, not referring to the class bivalvia, animals like clams etc, but other groups that possess two shells like seed shrimps, which are commonly known as bivalved arthropods. In several studies performed on them taxonomically, Bahusicaris, as a member of the order Hymenocarina, was found to be most closely related to animals like Adaria, which until recently were classified as a stem pan crustacean group although this is considered with low support, and are instead considered to be early mandibulates, the arthropods group that includes insects, crustaceans, millipedes, and their relatives. Hymenocarines are known to have 30 to 40 known species, with them being quite the diverse group, with their feeding strategies following suits, scavenging adaptations, alongside deposit feeding, active predation, and suspension feeding are all known of, with some even being suggested to have switched between different feeding strategies which reflects in the behaviours of many living invertebrate groups. They present a wide array of carapace shapes, which suggests it's a functionally complex structure, with them also holding some of the first recorded behaviours observed in extant mandibulates, including synchronised moltings and an upside-down mode of swimming. Bahusicaris has a peculiar carapace, in that theirs is arch-like, and is unlike anything seen in any other arthropods. Their carapace covers only the frontalmost section of the trunk, although extends ventrally beyond their legs draping over their fronts like floppy ears. It certainly gives them a funny look, with the height of said trunks sometimes being uneven in their fossils, likewise indicating compression artefacts, and that, potentially, they were weakly sclerotized in regards to forming their exoskeleton, and that it was also weakly mineralized. Another unique feature is regarding their extreme multi-segmentation, with them having 110 pairs of pyramus limbs and associated segments, the most of any known Cambrian arthropods, also having some distinct variation amongst them. Their size is also notable, with them as 25 centimetres being the largest bivalved arthropods known, and among the largest of Cambrian arthropods overall, in turn beating out related animals like Nerocaris and being one of the few arthropod taxa from the time to reach said sizes outside of the radiodonts, which includes animals like Anomalocaris and the Trilobitomorphs. Their carapace and size also has implications for their ecology and diet, with Bahutacaris's small carapace being adequate from what can be understood in trading protection for a lower energetic cost of swimming, with their increased size also helping in repelling predators. Their multi-segmented body is reminiscent of that of extant brachiopods, mainly anostracans, which are potentially good analogues in understanding their habits. The movement of their limbs allows for the creation of a suction force that is then used to bring prey into a meeting cage made by the limbs' end eyes inwardly pointing lobes which then transport the foods mechanically to the mouth. Bahutacaris's anatomy suggests a potentially similar feeding strategy, with their ability to prime larger, more nutritious prey, potentially allowing the size constraints associated with this form of feeding being reduced. Their likely method of swimming is also very peculiar, in that they may well have swam upside down in an inverted position, which occurs independently in multiple extant groups, and has been inferred in other extinct taxa like the related Odorea. This behaviour has been suggested to assist them both in suspension feeding and in increasing stability, with their established anatomy making this more likely given how unique it is. Their sensory system was also complex, with the rise being biolobes, which is highly unusual in the arthropod fossil records, showing that they could calculate distance better than most other animals in their environment. 
their elongated body, likewise exoskeleton, not to mention their large and paddle-shaped exopods, all would have assisted them in being active swimmers, with them currently being fused to having a nectobenthic lifestyle, living close to the sea floor. Pelagic arthropods have a skewed fossil record at the Burgess Shale, being most represented by moles, and having a very infrequent recovery of full-bodied specimens due to them living above the areas, being most represented by moles, and having a very infrequent recovery of full-bodied specimens due to them living above the areas where they would commonly be preserved in the case of a mudslide, which is not the case for Bahuticarus. Their gigantism shows that bivalved arthropods were exploring many different ecological positions during and after the Cambrian, increasing their known ecological and functional diversity, and that said gigantism occurs in more arthropod groups than previously recognised. The Burgess Shale and its fauna are iconic and in many ways represent the Cambrian period as a whole, although while most people know only about the animals made famous in the 1980s, Research, both across the world and in the shale itself, have revealed even more spectacular animals through intense research. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.